Hello and welcome. This is a video for required practical number six for AQA GCSE science for combined science biology students and triple science biology students as well. This is called photosynthesis. The whole point of this photosynthesis experiment is to investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis using an aquatic organism, for example, pondweed. Let's have a look to see first how we would actually measure the rate of photosynthesis. One way is to look at the number of bubbles produced by some pondweed. So here's some pondweed in a boiling tube with some water and it produces bubbles and we could count those bubbles. So an example of rate would be number of bubbles per minute. For example, 10 bubbles per minute. That would be an example of a rate. A second way is we could measure the volume of oxygen gas produced. There's bubbles of gas and that gas collects at the top of that measuring cylinder. An example for this would be the volume of oxygen per minute. For example, three centimeters cubed of oxygen per minute. A more accurate way of measuring the volume would be some apparatus that looks like this. Bubbles are formed. They collect in that small capillary tube, that thin tube, and the volume could be measured against the scale. So that's volume of oxygen per minute as well. For example, two centimeters cubed per minute, or even 10 millimeters cubed per minute. So these are ways in which the rate of photosynthesis might be measured by measuring the volume of oxygen produced. So let's take a look at the method. This is the practical and how we would do it. So. Number one, we set up the apparatus as shown with a ruler, our pondweed and a lamp. We're going to look at the effect of distance of the lamp versus the rate of photosynthesis. We would add something called sodium bicarbonate to the water. This adds carbon dioxide to the water to make sure it is in excess so that it is not a limiting factor. We would move the lamp to 10 centimeters, switch on and wait for a few minutes. We wait for a few minutes so that the rate of photosynthesis stabilizes. It takes a minute or two for that rate to stabilize, so we wait for a couple of minutes. We would count the number of bubbles produced in one minute. We would change the distance to 20 centimeters, wait, then count the number of bubbles produced in one minute. We would repeat this for five different distances. Here is a set of data. We've got distance going from 10 up to 50 in tens, number of bubbles produced in five minutes, but we want the rate in bubbles per minute. So we would divide the five minutes by five to get the rate in bubbles per minute. That's been done for every row on that table. Here is a graph of our potential results. The number of bubbles per minute is our dependent variable. So that goes on the Y axis. And the distance of the lamp is our independent variable, so that goes on the x-axis. The curve would look a little bit like this. The number of bubbles per minute indicates the rate of photosynthesis. So the number of bubbles per minute tells you how fast photosynthesis is going. The bigger the distance, the lower the light intensity. Therefore, there is a lower number of bubbles per minute, in other words, a lower rate, this shows that the rate of photosynthesis gets lower. Notice the line is a curve. There was a rapid drop in number of bubbles per minute at the beginning, as we can see there. And there's a slower rate of drop in number of bubbles per minute at the end, as we can see there. Our control variables, these are variables that we keep the same. We have the same pondweed and the same length of pondweed, same temperature, by using a water bath or a heat screen for our pondweed. Same carbon dioxide concentration achieved by adding sodium bicarbonate. And we would also repeat the experiment three times for each distance and take a mean. There are some other experiments we could do as well. These have come up on past paper questions. We could look at the light intensity versus the rate of photosynthesis. We wouldn't change the distance of the lamp we would change the intensity of the light by changing the power supply to the bulb in the lamp. So here's the experiment set up as before. We have low power, high power, and higher power. And each time we change the power, we get more light intensity. The independent variable in this case is the light intensity, and that's changed by changing the power supply to the lamp. 
and our dependent variable is the rate of photosynthesis. Again, that could be measured by number of bubbles per minute or volume of oxygen produced per minute. Our control variables are the temperature, the concentration of sodium bicarbonate or the carbon dioxide, and the distance of the lamp, which in this case needs to be kept the same. Our graph will look slightly differently. We have number of bubbles per minute on the y-axis, which is our dependent variable, and the power output of the lamp in watts as our independent variable. The curve would look something like this. The higher the power, the more number of bubbles per minute, which indicates a higher rate of photosynthesis. Another experiment is we could look at the color or the wavelength of light versus rate of photosynthesis, and we would set up like so, similar to before, but we would use a range of color filters. These are usually plastics that are see-through but have a certain color. We could add our first filter and shine red light onto our pondweed. We could use a green filter, and we could use a blue filter, and so on. The independent variable in this case is the color, or the wavelength of light, and this is changed by using the filters. And our dependent variables are the number of bubbles per minute, or volume of oxygen produced per minute. The control variables in this case are the temperature again, the concentration of sodium bicarbonate or carbon dioxide again, but this time the distance of the lamp and the light intensity are kept the same. Expected graphs for this experiment. Color is what we call a discrete variable. That means it can be measured by words and not numbers. We use a bar graph when we have a discrete variable as our independent variable. So number of bubbles per minute on the y-axis as our dependent variable, and our independent variable is the color of the filter, measured in words, as we said, blue, green, yellow, and red. And our results would look a little something like this. The lowest rate is for green, the highest for blue, second highest rate is for red. If we use wavelength as a continuous variable, in other words, measured by numbers, including decimals, we might use a line graph. This would look a bit more like this, number of bubbles per minute on the y-axis, but this time the wavelength is measured using numbers, in other words, the wavelength in nanometers. We sometimes see the words added just so that we know what colors we're talking about for those wavelengths, but the graph would look a little something like this. Again, highest rate in the blue region and a lower rate for green and yellow, and then slightly higher rate for the red region. So these are variations on that experiment that we could do. Let's take a look at an exam style question. So you can pause here and give this a go, but if not, we'll go through this together in a few moments. So the question says, a student investigated the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Figure one shows the apparatus. We've got an outline of the method and a diagram of the apparatus. 1.1. What is the independent variable in this investigation? In other words, what is the experimenter changing? And for this one, it's the distance of the pondweed from the lamp. The student changed the distance, so that's why we call that the independent variable. It's not the light intensity. 1.2, the lamp can get warm and heat up the water. How would warmer water affect the results of the investigation? Well, the bubbles of gas produced would be faster this is because photosynthesis is controlled by enzymes, and enzymes work faster at warmer temperatures. 1.3. Counting the number of bubbles produced per minute is not an accurate way to measure the rate of photosynthesis. Suggest two ways to measure the rate of photosynthesis more accurately. Number one, we could measure the volume of gas released instead of number of bubbles. And two, we could measure each distance three times or more and take a mean. That would increase the accuracy of our data. 1.4. The table shows the results of the investigation. Calculate the number of bubbles produced in two minutes when the light source was 20 centimeters from the pondweed. This is worth one mark. So we look at the 20 centimeter row. We've got number of bubbles produced in 30 seconds. What's the number of bubbles produced per two minutes? Well, we would multiply 56 times four because there's four sets of 30 seconds in two minutes. That gives us an answer of 224. 1.5, sodium hydrogen carbonate releases carbon dioxide gas into a solution. 
Describe how the student could change the method to investigate the effect of carbon dioxide concentration on the rate of photosynthesis. That's worth three marks. Also, we have to name the independent variable and two control variables. In this case, the independent variable is to use different concentrations of sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. And the control variables are the distance of the lamp or light intensity and the temperature of the solution and the same plant. It's worth making a note here that we have to mention how we would change the CO2 and not just say change the CO2 concentration. And for the second part there, same lamp or same light would not score a mark. We would have to say the distance of the lamp or the light intensity of the lamp. So that's it, required practical number six for photosynthesis with some exam questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.